All right, welcome back to another video. Today I'm gonna to be working on my Pioneer 700. And today's video is all about how to convert this manual dump bed with the hydraulic assist to a automatic push button dump bed. All right, so the goal is to have a button in the cab that you can have a spring-loaded toggle switch to raise or lower the bed. And to accomplish that, I'll be using an electric actuator to replace the hydraulic strut that comes on the Pioneer from the factory. In theory, it's a relatively easy thing to do. Basically, if you can find an electronic actuator with basically the same characteristics as this uh, hydraulic actuator, it should be as easy as just unbolting it and bolting that in, and then there would be some wiring. All right, first we'll start with the controls. If you watch my other videos, you'll see that when I installed an accessory fuse block under the hood of my Pioneer 700, I was thinking about the future, the near future for projects like this. So here I've installed that accessory fuse block. It's all relay controlled off the ignition. I also have a circuit dedicated just to the electronic actuator. In my turn signal video, I pre-wired the Pioneer for the actuator. That's what this white wire coiled up here is. It runs back in the harness from the front. It's a very simple circuit. Basically, you have power, fused power coming from the battery. In my case, fused switch power. And it runs to this switch here. And I will leave a link below in the description for the switch and the actuator that I used. Basically, this is a uh, polarity reversing switch. And how it works is spring-loaded, as you can see. When you hold it one direction, it sends a positive and negative 12 volts on the two wires to the actuator. And when you hold it the other direction, it reverses the polarity. And that's how actuators bring things up and down. It's also a way you could reverse a motor. But like I said, it's spring-loaded, momentary. That way... When you let off, the bed stops moving. This is a waterproof switch, and I was able to find it on Amazon. It is kind of an expensive switch at about $30, but it's worth it being that it's waterproof and built for this type of application. So out of the switch comes two wires. You run, those need to be a heavier gauge. In my case, I'm using, I believe it's 12 gauge wire, which is plenty for the actuator that I'm using. And that's run back here. And then now we're ready to try to figure out how we're going to install the actuator. All right, so the first step is to put something in here to keep the tailgate or the bed from falling. In this case, this adjustable broom stick should do the job. And then we're gonna take a 12 millimeter socket and take out both bolts. And there's, use a pair of pliers on the back to keep it from spinning. Whatever you do, don't let the nuts fall down because if they fall into the Bermuda Triangle here, you'll never find them again. All right, so there's that one. All right, so once that's off, I'm gonna test fit or take a look at our actuator. So here's the actuator that I'm trying. I don't have real high expectations for it. It was kind of cheap. Um, it's hard, it was hard to find one that would fit, that had the right specifications for length. So if this works out good, there'll be a link for it in the description as well. It says it's only rated at about 300 pounds though, so keep that in mind, the bed is rated to hold a thousand pounds. So you're going to have to kind of consider what you're going to be using the bed for. But I think this will actually do more than that, just because... It's just assisting the bed up. So we're gonna give it a shot and see how it works. So there it is slid into the bottom plate. As you can see up here at the top, I'll just need to bump the actuator up just a hair to get it into position. These do have limiting switches. In our case, they're not adjustable, so it won't work. So basically, when the bed is down, you have to let off the switch. 
otherwise you could break something. Uh, some of these you can get with adjustable limited switches, so when the bed's down, even if you hold the switch, it'll shut off. To me, that's not really important. Obviously, when the bed comes down and stops, you let off the switch. All right, so the purposes of moving this for testing, you can just use a little 9-volt battery to move it just a little bit. Well, we can see for space properly, as you can see, I need to go up just another smidge. All right, we're dead on now. So I'll do the same thing with the bolts at the top. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and tighten these up. Not real tight, just snug. I'm using a um, nylon lock nut. That way this can still pivot. All right, so now what we have to do is we have to unlock the bed locking mechanism because we do not want that to function anymore. All right, so the bed lock mechanism, we want this to be permanently locked off. There's a couple ways you can either completely take it off or you can just zip tie it up for testing purposes, which I'm going to do right now. Try to zip tie it in place like this. All right, so for now I used a couple zip ties to hold the lever up and then use my 9 volt to kind of lift the bed a little bit. That little 9 volt actually was able to lift the bed. It was real slow, but... And I put another zip tie on the other side to hold this piece out. So now I'm going to go ahead and hook it up and try it out and see if this actually works. All right, so now the moment of truth. Will it work? So now the real test is going to be, can it handle any kind of a load? All right, so now it's time for the true test. We're going to push it right to the limit and see what we can do. Probably too much. I had to use my hand to help help it get going at first. I don't really know how much that weighs. That's wet stone, so probably way, way too much for that. So now I'm gonna try something a little more reasonable, like a load of firewood. We'll see if it can handle that. All right, so I've got this amount of firewood in it, which isn't that much, really. I wanna see if it can even do this before I load it all the way full. Because I'm starting to think this actuator isn't the one. So it's lifting it. Not the best thing I've ever seen. All 
All right, so we'll add some more and see what happens. All right, now we've got the bed full, pretty much, of this solid oak firewood. So it weighs a lot. So let's see what happens here. All right, so it was able to do that. It wasn't real fast, but it worked. So I guess my conclusion is going to be, it rate it will lift its rated capacity, but definitely not anymore. And I'm going to need it to be able to do more because I need to do gravel. So I'll probably be replacing this actuator, but I'll leave these parts in the description for this video because this is probably going to be good enough for a lot of you guys out there who aren't doing any kind of major hauling with your Pioneer. Maybe just a little bit of firewood or some dirt you want to move around. This might be able to do the trick for you. All right, so for many, the capacity of this actuator would be plenty. Like I said, you saw you could lift a load of firewood in the bed. But for me, I need it to be able to do more. I need it to be able to lift the bed when it's got a heavy load of gravel in it. So I'm switching it up a little bit. The problem is... trying to find a linear actuator that will fit without doing a ton of modifications to the bottom of the side-by-side -side and custom making brackets. So I found one other one. Let me give it a try. And this is a Progressive Dynamics. This is IP68, so it's completely waterproof, which is another good thing. And if you look, if we put them side-by-side, -side, you can see that they're very close in size within half an inch or so, but you can see how much larger the motor is. Now this one is rated for 450 pounds, and this one was rated for around 300 pounds. So that's another 150 pounds. So, and it's a much better brand. So I'm gonna give this one a shot, see if it does any better. The thing is, this one was about almost three or four times the amount of that one. So it's quite a expensive upgrade over that one. So for some people, that one might be good enough on the left. I have links to both of these in the description. You can make the decision based upon my video which one might work best for you. All right, so I put this one in a little different. I put it with the motor towards the top and it actually fits, or when it closes, it hits the limit switch right when this thing is perfectly set down. So that's pretty cool. But when it goes all the way up, it doesn't hit the limit switch before the bed hits the stops. So that could be a problem because you're gonna push the bed all the way up and then if you just keep your button down on the actuator, it's going to try to break something. So I'm gonna have to think about what I'm gonna do about that. And we have some contact right here that isn't gonna work. So I gotta figure out how I'm gonna address that as well. What I should probably do is move this hole and drill another one right here, just a hair up that would move this whole thing forward a little bit and allow it to travel a little bit more. All right, so what I did to make it work, I put the bottom one in the factory hole and then I modified the top hole a little bit. I moved it forward or up, depending on how you're looking at the bed, about an inch. What that does is when I open it up all the way to max extension, it hits its internal limit switch when the bed is exactly at the full height. When I bring it down, it doesn't quite hit the limit switch, but you know to stop the bed because the bed stops moving. You let off the switch. So it works out pretty good. It's just a little off, but since you can't set the limit switches on this unit, it you're kind of limited what you can do. So what I'll do is I'll run the wire back along the bed 
and curve it and run it back along the frame here. Put it in some uh, convoluted tubing. But now I'm going to try it out to see if it was worth the upgrade over the other one. So there's a full bucket of gravel before. Let's see what happens this time when we try to dump the bed. That is the result I was hoping for. Okay, so success, I'm happy with that. Now I've just gotta finish getting it all wired up. I've just got it temporarily wired. That is what it should look like. So like I said, you gotta decide how much money you wanna spend. It's up to you. So here's our finished product. Let's see, we've got it installed and the wiring is run and it runs along the factory wiring and then it comes up and connects in right here. Alrighty, well that wraps this up video up. Hopefully there's some useful information here. Um, like I said, check out the uh, description for the video for links to the products that I used, the two actuators and the switch here. And if you have any questions, leave a comment. Be sure to like the video if it helped you out and subscribe for more. Until next time, we'll see you later.